My name is Liran Rosenfeld. Thank you so much for joining us. Most of you probably know me very well. Um, just to, for a quick recap to say uh, the Eco Village vision is to co-create eco villages around the world with a membership one enables access to all live a healthy work life balance surrounded by your tribe inspired by nature. Uh, currently, we're here talking about um, Yoko Village in Santa Teresa uh, in the location that is called Senga. This is us here in, um, in Santa Teresa. And um, today, um, we're going to make a quick presentation about um, Yoko Village Health and Wellness Retreat Center. I'm really excited about um, having you um, all here and sharing um, um, this with you. Um, this is a very exciting project. What you can see here is the site map of the phase one part um, of Yoko Village Health and Wellness Retreat Center. Um, today we are here to share and introduce the co-founders and talk about what's going to be there and why we're doing this and what's our vision looking like and also to share that we're doing um, and we are raising three million dollars um, with a 24 months term with a total of return investment of 30 percent collateralized by real estate existing units and permits all here in Santa Teresa. Um, on the right hand side you can also see part of the phase one site map um, of Senga. Um, to, to do a quick recap, the summary of terms is that we're raising a total of $3 million in debt. Uh, the length of the loan is 24 months. The minimum is investment is $50,000. The maximum is five hundred. dollars And when you come in, you also can enjoy these units that we're showing here on the pictures. Uh, on an annual uh, stay, you could stay for a few nights for free with this investment while, uh, the, loan, uh, while the loan is running. Uh, we're doing this uh, with a purpose and want you to participate in an opportunity to accelerate the construction and development of the health and wellness retreat center um, where we're going to unlock eventually 43 hospitality units event space retreat facility co-working space the restaurant spa and rental spaces for medical practitioners um Tanga today is, is is a company that has a few investors um, and it has uh, two titled parcels now comprising a total of 14 and a half acres. Um, the annual revenue opportunity that the business is expected to make is $4 million. And um, in case of non-payment or for some reason, uh, we could launch the, the business. This debt opportunity um, will convert into equity, but in case uh, that the um, that, that things didn't work out as planned, uh, there's an extra security on the loan. If payment is not made within the next year, lenders possess the authority to auction the entire project, reclaiming both their principal and interest in, in the process. Now we've acquired um, Yoko Village North, which is 26, uh, um, um, and it's, there's a mistake here with the acres, uh, it's 26 acres and uh, has later acquired um, Sanga Retreat Center uh, that today has um, um, is fully permitted and has the first five units uh, that are already operational. Um, we are here to partner with very exciting uh, humans, people, doctors, um, business figures, uh, and uh, also very passionate um, leaders. Um, and um, I'm excited for you all to meet them. Um, maybe I'll let um, now my co-founder, David Paravan, uh, share a little bit more about this presentation. Hello, great to see everyone. Um, so I'm Dr. David Pavan, uh, co-founder of Yuko Village. Excited to share a little bit more today about our recent development at Tanga. Um, so uh, it is obvious to say that the retreat wellness space has experienced massive growth. It's very obvious when you go to Santa Teresa, that's for sure. Um, it's a huge market. Wellness tourism is expected to go up to $1 trillion in market size next year. Um, but what is very noticeable is that there, it's easy to find spaces to host retreats for 10 or 15 or 20 people, but it's much harder to find spaces for 40, 50, 60, maybe 100 people. Um, and so, uh, and there's also a general lack of, like I would say, professionalism. The quality is kind of all over the place. 
Um, but we're not just building a retreat center. Now we're adding a clinic element to it. Um, if you want to go to the next slide. Um, yes. So one of the reasons why we're doing this is that Santa Teresa, uh, it's pretty, again, obvious to people who have been there probably has a total lack or absence of sophisticated healthcare. Um, and so one of the consequences is that if you imagine you'd like to maybe bring your parents there, or maybe you'd like to grow old there in your community, uh, th there is a serious risk, right? And I think a lot of people have been in the situation that they were not able to uh, bring people who- Mark, Mark and I, by the way, have had some like literally three and a half, four hour conversations. Oh, I'm so sorry, David. I didn't know I was on mute. I'm sorry. I'm in a meeting. My apologies, David. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, uh, you know, we would like to uh, basically bring to Santa Teresa the first sophisticated healthcare clinic uh, in the world, which in the end, uh, not part of this round, but we would like to, we are going to include a helipad to be able to transport people in emergencies past the tertiary care facilities in San Jose. Uh, and so for now, uh, this facility in Sanga will include uh, primary healthcare, uh, basic diagnostics for people to do annual checkups, to do emergency care, uh, urgent care, and also the retreat space, which is integrated into it. Uh, so that will include alternative healthcare. Um, so uh, the location is really key of where we are. So we are, um, we, we are basically merging together Yoko North and Sangha in some way. So here we are adding a piece of Yoko North to Sangha to build this building, um, which will include the healthcare facility and, and some other spaces. Uh, and this is a few minutes away from the beach, uh, but it's tucked away in a beautiful forest that cannot be touched. Um, and so it's a very special location. Uh, and again, coming back to the retreat space. Um, so. Um, in the retreat space, I think there is a there is basically while it's growing, uh, there is a kind of a quality of retreats are all over the place. Uh, I would say that there's a general lack of professionalism and of, uh, for example, integration post experience of retreats. And so uh, we are very excited to partner with three incredible doctors. Uh, for example, one of them is Arjun Reyes, who is. Uh, specializing in alternative medicine, such as ketamine uh, therapies and the integration part of it. He's doing research on this. So uh, we really want to do this uh, in a different way, in a controlled way, in a safe way, uh, with medical supervision where uh, people feel safe and it's a, and it's a, it's a meaningful experience to them. Um, yeah, leading on to the next slide. Um, so this funding round will be used to build um, more hospitality units. So what you can see at the bottom here are these glamping units, which out of which five, six we've already finished and you might have seen in person if you were there. Um, so we're basically building 20 more of those to host more people, uh, communal spaces for the community an event space for the retreats and then a bunch of wellness uh, around it. Um, and one also key point that uh, we would like, we always include actually in our fundraising is that uh, we kind of welcome investors who want to, you know, support financially this vision to not just be, be kind of transactional investors, but to actually become community members and join us. And so the way we do that is um, if you want to invest uh, at any point during the investment period, uh, you can choose to convert your principal plus interest into a piece of land in the community at reduced prices. So at land prices from last year. So this is basically an open invitation for investors to try out, to get to know the team through the investment, but to hopefully become actually community members and, and join us on this crazy mission. With that being said, I'm going to pass over to, we have, uh, our three incredible doctors joining us today uh, who um, are going to introduce themselves and talk a little bit about their interests and why they joined this. Uh, so I, I'm going to pass over to Dr. Jabara Swain. Thank you so much.
while Jabaris is coming in, I'll just say I'm very excited to have here over 50 participants um, joining. So this, this is really exciting. Uh, thank you all for joining. Uh, Jabaris, do we have you with us? Yeah, and by the way, we're keeping this uh, a little bit kind of concise and to the point, uh, and we will open it up to questions shortly after. So uh, yes, all the doubts and concerns we can address. Yeah, a Q&A session. Um, perhaps uh, um, we can let Jabari's join in in a little bit and we can start with Carlo. Dr. Carlo Richards. Maybe he's on mute. Uh, uh, I saw Jabaris earlier. I'm not sure if he got uh, pulled away or is he's trying to log back. Oh, he got kicked out is what I'm seeing here. Um, so maybe we can keep track of him if he comes back on. Uh, in the meantime, I'm happy to, to introduce myself. My name is Dr. Carlo Reyes. I'm an emergency physician, a pediatrician, uh, a healthcare attorney, and a philanthropist. Um, I'm so excited to be a part of this team. Uh, we've been uh, visualizing this for about a year. Uh, I run an emergency department in Southern California. I've been in practice for 20 years. Um, and I started uh, a nonprofit entity that sends medical missions all over the world. And I took that experience and um, learned a lot. And then I started a health IT company and I've been building health IT platforms for about seven years. Uh, we've launched two of them, uh, and one of them is for a global medical mission record, medical record that we use on our medical missions, which is quite unique. Um, I'm super excited about this. I've been in the integrative health space, uh, active uh, uh, yoga enthusiast, and was so excited to join Yoko. Um, my passion is blending all of the different services that um, are part of integrative health, including um, primary care, preventative medicine, urgent and emergent care, um, as well as alternative therapies and integrative medicine, uh, including um, uh, psychiatric and um, uh, psychedelic therapies and uh, giving access to all these different therapies uh, through the integration of a mobile health app that we are in the process of building as well through telehealth and mobile health. Um, so this is a huge endeavor um, and uh, we're super excited about uh, providing all these services uh, for uh, clients of Yoko, Yoko Health. Um, and, uh, and that's me. Thank you so much, Carlo. Um, great introduction. Um, I saw um, Jabaris coming in. Uh, Jabaris, maybe you'd like to just say hi, introduce yourself, share with us um, about your experience and why you're doing this and uh, um, anything else you'd like. And Jabaris, you are. Okay, um, maybe while uh, Jabaris uh, um, settles in, we can let Dr. Uh, uh, Arjun uh, share a little bit, um, a little bit about yourself. Same thing, please. Okay, okay. Hi, um, I'm Arjun Reyes. I'm actually Carlo's brother. Um, I've actually been interested in moving to Costa Rica for maybe like eight or nine years. And I was so excited to find Yoko Village and purchase a piece of property in, in Yoko South. Um, and as David said, we we were were so interested in help, um, building up the healthcare community there, um, because you know if you've been there, the healthcare healthcare is not that great in Santa Teresa. Um, I've been a psychiatrist for greater than 20 years. Um, I'm um, trained in child, adolescent, adult, and addiction. I'm a medical director of a hospital. Also, I'm a psychedelic researcher. I've been involved in alternative treatments for about 12 years. Um, FDA approved psychedelic treatments for about seven years. And most recently, the last couple of years, I've been involved in psychedelic research in the hopes that some of these um, psychedelic treatments will be FDA approved 
probably within the next year and year and a half year and a half. So I'm also excited to be able to incorporate some of these um, treatments in um, Costa Rica's wellness center that we're we're building there, um, creating um, protocols and treatments for different um, conditions, and also um, to raise consciousness. Um, so that's who I am. And um, if you guys have any questions for me when we get to the Q and A, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Arjun. Uh, great intro. Without further ado, uh, Wayne, can can you hear us? Yes, excellent. Thank you. Um, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Very pleased to see you all here uh, on the uh, webinar. I apologize for the delay here. Uh, I'm based in Philadelphia. We actually got snow today, and so uh, it's interfering with the internet and the electricity. But no less, we found a way forward. So very pleased to see you all. But I'm Jabara Swain. Uh, I uh, currently a medical executive here at Johnson and Johnson and also a cardiothoracic transplant surgeon. Um, I trained in heart and lung transplantation. And as part of that work, uh, I've also uh, dedicated much of my career to providing health care to resource limited settings like places like Rwanda and Haiti. And in some of that philanthropic work, um, I became interested and engaged in understanding health provision and health care resources in limited resource settings, and particularly in places where you know, people visit and travel, and there's a experience of medical tourism, but not a whole lot in the way of infrastructure. Costa Rica came on my radar uh, kind of serendipitously uh, through an interest of uh, looking for a place where I could build maybe a second home, uh, bring my family, and really as an escape from kind of the day-to-day -day, uh, work that I uh, do here in Philadelphia. And as I got into the space, realized that while there was a ethos of healthcare and wellness, um, the way in which resources were allocated in Santa Teresa uh, were limited. Uh, you know, when you look at the map and you see where, how far we are from San Jose, it becomes real and personable to you uh, how challenging healthcare can be in that space. So after connecting with both Arjun and Carlo, uh, it became a reality for us to understand how we might be able to participate in helping to develop the healthcare infrastructure for that area. And so really excited now to be able to incorporate not only health, but also wellness in Santa Teresa and coming to this opportunity where it will likely become a reality in the very near future. Uh, we have some really strong healthcare backgrounds that we're bringing to this experience and we're hoping to uh, engage the help of all of you uh, as you think about your future, not only in Santa Teresa, but a part of the Yoko Village. So thank you all again for joining us today. And we're looking really forward to answering any questions you may have. Fantastic. Thank you, Jabaris. Um, I'll, I'll take this opportunity and mention that um, the us and um, Jabaris, Carla, and Arjun are going to be here at Yoko Connect at the end of the month in the Micro Festival Yoko Village is hosting. And I uh, hope to see you all here. We're going to be on stage expanding um, more about what's happening here and sharing a lot of additional details. I'd like to take this time that we have now uh, for this webinar. It's, we've done well in exactly 20 minutes, kind of introducing ourselves and sharing the basics. Uh, now, um, the idea is to develop a conversation. A lot of people have been asking me about, are there going to be ayahuasca ceremonies there? Is it even legal? Um, how is the integration part going to happen? Um, what's your price point? When are you opening? Uh, so I'd like to just uh, um, um, offer um, just anyone here um, would like to develop a conversation about a topic that you think is relevant and, uh, and interesting to you or any question uh, we could take. We're 58 participants. I'm sure some of you here would like to ask. Uh, <laughs> so don't be shy. Now is the time. Well, Lerona, I think I'll, I'll start off really quickly with a question. I know a lot of people wonder, you know, um, when they come down and visit Santa Teresa, you know, what type of care would they need? Like, and how often is it even necessary 
uh, to think about health and wellness. If you're there on vacation, you know, have, do you have any stories or experience where it's been necessary to have a doctor or a nurse or a therapist or anything of the like? And what type of care services are going to be provided? Um, we have uh, um, Jules Evans here raising hand. Jules, would you like to go with the first question? Maybe it's relevant to what Jabari said. Um, yeah, hi. Um, so a, a bit like the question that um, you mentioned, people asking a lot. Uh, I'd love to know um, what it's a question I often get asked. I live here as well in 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 uh, bought a lot in in Eco Villa. Um, is this the legal status of psychedelics? So many people come here. There's, there's so many psychedelic centers here, but um, I, I mean, it's not always clear what the what the legal status is with the government. Um, another thing, we sometimes kind of get criticized with, with communities like Eco Villa, how much we're giving back to the local communities. So um, you know, what, what, can, what can places like Eco Villa or Yoko Village do to also support lower income local people? Thank you. Uh, I could uh, jump in um, and answer you know, give you my answer for both of those, actually. Uh, uh, we've, after going over some research, we found that uh, there has been no issue with uh, ayahuasca in Costa Rica in terms of uh, um, providing it. Um, we've found uh, no restrictions. Um, uh, there is more work to do in psychedelics all over the world and the trend is to move towards accepting psychedelics and like uh, my brother had mentioned uh, psilocybin for example is probably a heartbeat away from being legal and and is already legal in six states in the united states uh, in the united states for example but looking at the research in costa rica there appears to be no regulatory restraints that have been uh uh, used on, on the use of uh, ayahuasca. And uh, with that, we feel confident that that we can launch something like ayahuasca at, uh, at the clinic. Now, with regards to the local support, my heart goes towards that question. Being a philanthropist and sending medical missions globally um, for a, almost a decade, um, that is part of our plan is to add philanthropy. I, I believe that uh, uh, philanthropy is part of community. It's part of wellness. It's part of uh, um, uh, of what the ethos of what Yoko is all about. Um, uh, we have my, my nonprofit has been doing uh, medical missions in places like Nicaragua and Honduras and India and Haiti. And this is something that I'm excited of incorporating uh, to help uh, the locals, uh, communities uh, throughout Costa Rica. Uh, there is uh, discussion with uh, considering uh, adding uh, remote clinics uh, in the region as well to serve um, not only Santa Teresa, but Santa Teresa, but beyond Santa Teresa as well. And that's definitely in the discussion. I have a question. Hi. Hi, Nick. <laughs> uh, so for investors, just so I'm speaking the correct language, say that they are a practitioner of yoga, coach, wellness. Are you still offering them to be able to use a facility once a year for a retreat as being an investor? Because that's something that you did previously. And now I'm just seeing the three days a week, you know, the kind of thing. So is that still available? Because I think that's a major asset that bought me, you know, that sold me um into what i was thinking of when i when i invested in sangha is that something you're shifting out of or can you give me any points on that yes uh, i'm curious david what would be your answer yeah it's uh, it's the same um i would say uh, we we invite investors to have access to the space to to not just be transactional investors but to be part of the community in the same way that they can convert to land 
um, they can also host retreats and we'll give them kind of a first right of using the retreat space for that, obviously pending availability, but yes. And I see Chad is raising his hand. Hey, Chad, it's great to see you here. Hey, guys, good to see you too. Uh, I'm cu curious about like um, payments. I'm Canadian and much of the, the, the medical services that we have here in Canada, even when we're traveling abroad are covered. How will, have you given any thought to how you're gonna structure things? Is it all kind of like private healthcare where you just pay per transaction? Uh, and or does certain medical healthcare uh, plans or, or whatnot cover costs and fees? Um, and then is there going to be um, special treatment for potential investors, right? So if we you know, contribute a significant fund to the clinic itself. Is there, um, you know, is there going to be a, we'll call it a, a founder's pricing sort of thing? That's a great question. <laughs> um, love it, Chad. Um, you always ask the best questions. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> we haven't thought about um, kind of like uh, uh, perks for investors on this type of uh, loan because right now we're raising a debt. Um, and that's uh, that's more like uh, transactional, but uh, we are going to now take your question, brainstorm around it, and see um, what we can do because we will come back probably in six to twelve months um, to do a, a bigger equity raise once we're more advanced, and th then that's going to be uh, buying maybe buying equity, um, and that's going to be different. Uh, so for this debt. I would say there's not going to be additional perks from just getting the interest and also getting some free nights at Sangha, but we will definitely brainstorm and come back with an answer. I think uh, it's something that we should be be thinking about. Fantastic. And the second part is is like how does payment happen? Are you going to take private health care payments, uh, emergency medical payments, that kind of stuff, or is it all cash transactions, that kind of thing? Have you thought about that stuff? And if you haven't, great, something good for thought. Um, I have a third question, if that's all right, if I can jump in, just from a, putting my project manager hat on, is what's the roadmap look like? Do we have an established timeline, um, construction company that's been outlined, all that kind of stuff? Like, do we have any kind of um, boots in the ground project plan yet? And what does that timeline look like? Yes, so um, we're going to deploy the funds that we're raising here, the three million to open phase one. Uh, that's a 12 months timeline uh, to open the whole thing. Although the place is already kind of semi open right now already, right? Um, and um, within a year we'll open phase one and uh, within the following year we'll open uh, phase two. So it's, it's a two year uh, plan, but we're already uh, generating revenue right now through Sangha, through the, the, the first five units that we've got there. Um, I want to address the, the second question you had, because that was the third question, right? Um, if you'd be able to pay also through your um, through your health insurance or through any way through, um, or is it just cash? Um, and, and so I would say this is a question that is going to, um, is addressing more of like long-term um, um, options that we plan to have but as as of as of the, the starting point to come here to get checked in the clinic uh to uh, have a concierge service um that might be um maybe a cash payment or a um a payment that you could spread throughout the year as a subscription especially when we're talking about concierge uh, medical concierge medical services which is something we're very interested in in launching with the clinic um but we uh, haven't um, we haven't got to that stage yet? Um, so we that that is also a great question because we will need to figure out um, how we can connect to uh, health insurance around the U.S. and Canada and maybe in more countries. Yeah, maybe just one note on this question. It 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 depends on your insurance plan. So it's quite hard to answer it for everyone. Just for one point of reference, I know my private healthcare insurance would cover it as long as it's 
a, uh, as long as it's licensed physicians and uh, institution that is kind of legit, right? Uh, now that's my European private health insurance that covers me worldwide, but uh, I think it is a bit of a case by case basis, but obviously we have licensed physicians on the ground, so yeah. So we have two more questions. Uh, let's start with Dylan. Hey, Dylan. Hi, nice to meet everyone. Uh, appreciate the introductions and some more insight into this. Um, I had some questions about sort of the process with some of these innovative uh, treatment methods. And I'm understanding that it's going to be for a medical purpose, but also some people are looking for spiritual enlightenment and things like that. Just wanted to understand more so about who this is geared towards um, and sort of maybe also some of the liabilities for people who are coming to have that in spiritual enlightenment as opposed to having a medical need for some of these practices. I can actually answer that and maybe Carlo can um, tag along if that's OK. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's going to include a spectrum of almost everybody because my assessments that I do in my office, I'm going to incorporate there too, which includes all levels of consciousness. It's also going to be used for clinical use for disorders. So, and we're going to assess um, people based on, you know, psychiatric issues. And it's, it's going to determine like um, what we're going to do in terms of psychedelics. I mean, a lot of things are being looked at right now. I'm, 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 like I said, I'm doing research. We're looking at dosing, we're looking at amount, we're looking at what kind of psychotherapeutic modalities will help with certain kinds of situations. I'd also like to add that, um, and we didn't, we haven't really mentioned this, and I don't think we've mentioned it to, um, uh, to Laron. Um, both my brother and I come from a, a family of um, spiritual teachers. My grandparents were spiritual teachers in Ohio. So we have, we, that's part of our DNA. So, it, we want obviously to incorporate something that increases consciousness, and really that's my my thing. I really want to increase consciousness to every person that um, I see. So it's and it's going to be done in a way that it, it's safe, um, helpful, and I have a team of people who are really knowledgeable on how to treat um, every kind of disorder and and just the human condition. It doesn't have to be a psychiatric disorder. It's just basic life, right? We all suffer in life, so. Um, so that's that's kind of my stance. If you, Carlo, if you have anything to add to that, that would be great. Yeah, I, I love that question. Uh, Arjun and I are lifetime meditators. Um, we are on our path uh, spiritually, as as we all are, and we're very well aware of it. Uh, we're excited because we get to incorporate our medical background, then blend it with our spiritual path, which is just the most exciting thing. Um, we see uh, consciousness as a spectrum uh, that ranges from a tremendous amount of um, psychiatric suffering uh, all the way to kind of mind body wellness and elevation and evolution. So uh, the amazing thing about uh, all these different integrative therapies and in particular psychedelics is that it can be used in so many different ways. It's the most exciting thing in medicine. It's a revolution psychedelics. Um, so we are fully committed to really, uh, as investigators, I'm also a, a sub-investigator, we're committed to finding the, the optimal therapies in psychedelics for a wide range of conditions that we all suffer from, right? Um, so yes, to answer your question, uh, there's going to be wide applicability um, in this. But as far as the uh, kind of the I think you had mentioned something about medical legal and liability, et cetera. Um, we are incorporating a tremendous amount of pre-screening and post-integration. Uh, one of the biggest uh, pitfalls um, for all the psychedelic um, centers is, is their lack of pre-screening and their lack of post-integration. So to incorporate Western medicine and the rigor of scientific evidence-based uh, principles, we are going to be applying that in this arena, which is next level. So um, yeah, so I, I we're pretty much going to be the first ones to do this. Uh, we have a tremendous amount of uh, backing and 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 prior 
scientific experience with Dr. Swain and, and my brother and myself in research and academics. So yeah, so uh, this, this is exactly the wheelhouse that we're in and this is exactly what we're reaching for. So that is the perfect question. Yep. And just to add to that, Carlo, I think one thing that sets this experience apart from others is the uh, kind of medical guardrails that come along with uh, providing care in this way. And then as well as the longitudinal follow-up, uh, which engages the reintegration, particularly if you look at some of the endeavors that are already present in the Costa Rica space, utilizing alternative therapy, uh, like ayahuasca is that you see patients or uh, individuals go and participate and are discharged to go back home and really are lost to follow up and it's unclear as to what their path or journey is thereafter and it's not until you know later on that you find out that there may have been an untoward activity or something that went south but the idea here particularly with some of the technology that carlo and his nonprofit has uh, is to be able to stay connected with individuals, especially those who don't live there in Santa Teresa after they are discharged, such that we understand sort of what their journey is thereafter, if they need to come back, if there needs to be follow-up or longitudinal care or, or some sort of supervision um, as they continue to reintegrate back into normal society. So I think the use cases um, are uh, have been very well thought out, uh, and there are a lot of opportunity for us uh, for learning, but Particularly, we want to make sure that we create a community of individuals that are part of this endeavor such that we uh, stay in touch and make sure we understand what the outcomes are. And, and if I can add to that, it really is the, the mobile health and the telehealth, the AI that we're going to be building into a platform that's going to be uh, integrated into the pre-screening, the post-integration, the counseling. So it really is an end-to-end -end, um, constant uh, touch with people that go through these different types of therapies aided by um, the, the, the healthcare technology that already exists. Thank you for that. I'd say before we go to the next question, you know, um, I've, uh, I've always, uh, um, before we, were, we partnered up, and um, with uh, um, Jabaris, Carlo, and Arjun, um, we were just um, kind of like manifesting and, and building and planning the center, right? We we were not planning to um, have ceremonies because of the reason that we we were a bit worried about well legality and also taking care of people really in in these like um, delicate conditions. Uh, I've personally always I just was imagining myself going to do yoga or a meditation session or some sort of a, um, a workshop in the forest, in the river there at Sangha, which is really beautiful. And now that um, there is this combination of adding the lot to the north side um, and making it a clinic with real med tech and real physicians um, and giving the area a different type of uh, service and mindset uh, i think that is um, that is something that that gets me uh gets me going for this uh we have justin uh who's raising his hand and then some uh also uh nicholas uh justin you're next in line nice uh, to meet thank you um i guess i'm just curious the i've been following some of the investment rounds i guess uh, what I'm curious about is how's the separation? This seems like this is about the health facility, whereas previous rounds were more about sort of, I don't know, I guess the accommodation. I don't know if, if those are organizationally different organizations or is it all part of the same, like is an investment in this an investment in the entire village or is it specific to the health center? So um, Sangha is an entity of itself with its shareholders. And this is, um, well, what we're talking about today is an investment in the form of debt as, as lending. And um, you would be lending to uh, Sangha as a company who owns the, the land and the structures and permits, and now also the new concept and the clinic and whatever it is that we're going to build there. Now, we have had other um, debt uh, rounds, you could say. So we offerings. Uh, the last one was a million and a half to build the Yoko Village uh, South uh, Road, 
which which we we are now holding to this money and, and really ready to break grounds and hopefully any day we'll get started. Um, and then we also had other rounds um, of financing. So in we today you have Yoko Village North, that's an entity. You have Yoko Village South, that's another entity, and you have Sangha. That Sangha includes the the retreat center and the health and wellness clinic. Uh, into both. So in, by investing into this, you are investing just into Sangha and actually not into uh, Yoko Village North or or South. I hope that answers the question. It does, yeah. Um, and just out of curiosity, a follow up. But if someone wanted to uh, know the history of the debt financing and the repayment, I don't know if terms have come up yet on those or not. But is there sort of numbers that can be shared out post Zoom call? Yes, and I and I would probably say that you know we took 500k about uh, five or five months ago, uh, and about three months later uh, we returned the uh, 500 plus 75k interest. Then we took a 1.5 uh, a few weeks ago, and uh, now we're doing this. The 1.5 just started, so it's uh, it's um, the period is just getting started. Uh, we have so far. Have uh, um, returned uh, whenever we took debt, we have returned it on time, and we have uh, many many happy uh, in New York Village. Although uh, there's been some delays in getting and uh, breaking grounds into New York South, uh, overall seeing a very beautiful community, which is most of the people are investing and returning and reinvesting, which which makes me um, feel really really good about the efforts. Uh, Nicholas Katz, uh, we've spoken in the past. Great to see you. Thank you for joining. You have a question. Yeah, lovely to see you again, Lira. Um, yeah, you already answered part of my question. So thank you, Justin and Liran. I was going to ask um, if you'd used uh, debt structures before. So clearly you have. Um, I guess just at a high level, it would be interesting for me, and I'm sure other people, like what from a fundraising perspective has driven you to raise debt versus equity, and what's kind of made you move back and forth between those instruments, uh, even just like practically speaking, what's the advantage for you guys? Um, I feel like I kind of understand most of the offering to the investors. It'd just be good to hear a little bit about that, the the balance between equity and debt and how you think about that. Sure, yeah. Um, well, most uh, real estate projects uh, around the world usually use debt as the instrument to facilitate uh, financing for for the development of the project, right? So the reason is because when you do that, it's um, you don't need to give up a portion of your business, and you don't really have to have partners, um, and you have a timeline that's very clear about um, how you get going and when you uh, disperse the the funds, uh, returning um, the principal and the interest. Um, We've always wanted to have uh, um, a debt um, um, structure because um, it just it's easier uh, when you get married with somebody. It's it's kind of like in parallel when you sell equity, uh, so that that person is always there. Uh, we we'd like to run um, um, everything that we're doing as a community, and we all we we love having roundtables and these Zoom meetings and webinars. Uh, but at the at the end of the day, it's it's um, not having to go through um, equity is 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 um, equity is a, also a more uh, I guess uh, uh, complicated transaction. Now we will um, go through an uh, an equity round at one point at Yoko Village. We've never raised equity. Uh, maybe just when we got started with the first group of people. Some of them are some of them are here, um, and. Um, we will be raising um, debt as we expand the clinic. Usually an equity round would be a much, much bigger round. So we're talking about 10, 20, 30 million uh, for us, and we would not go into a small debt the equity round versus debt. We can take 500K, 3 million, and, and, and it's, it's easier to construct. Cheers, Nicholas. Thank you for the question. Uh, I would say this, we are uh, already eight months in due diligence uh, with a big group uh, from Miami to get a, um, a very big uh, credit line for Yoko Village. And um, 
at Yoko Village today, we already have another project in the Netherlands, and it seems like, you know, Yoko Village will build more eco villages around the world and also in Costa Rica. So at one point, we will have a big equity round and we will inform everyone about it. What's really excited about, exciting about um, the Yoko Village Health and Wellness uh, uh, Retreat Center and the clinic is that it's not just coming to do so good, it's also something that has so much um, um, it has it has so much uh, to offer and it has so much uh, here and and giving back to the local community, but also a great way to just make great revenues and be able to take loans and you know pay back investors and and grow and make this a great a great business overall. Now I would say that usually when you participate in the debt first. Later, we already have this relationship, and then we, we I usually go to the people who have lended money to to uh, the company that I work for, and I go, hey, you already trusted me. Do you want to trust me first? So kind of like giving the priority to them uh, first. And um, I see that we have another question here in the chat from uh, from Joe. How you doing, Joe? Thank you. We can hear you. So um, you wanted us to speak uh, in case of the bad days, right? Let's yes. Say. Downside protection. What's the plan? How are you guys mitigating it? And what's you know what is more clarification around these words? And so again, like when you buy equity into a business, you would uh, go need to go through us in times or bad times. But as a lender. You have additional securities, collateral, and so I want to talk a little bit about your question. And in case of non-payment of interest or principal, the astounding amount will convert into equity. So what does that mean? So we've shared um, an equity chart. So how much equity your investment? Let's say you invest 50k or 100k or 100k. Uh, there is uh, on the presentation a a chart uh, that tells you how much equity you will have. But then there is another paragraph there that says if payment is not made within uh, the next year lenders possess the authority to option the entire project so what happened you be you um you invested in a business that for some reason uh, did not succeed and you'd like to secure your your um your investment the money that you've lent okay. to this business. what what happens is um another year would pass after you receive the equity and you haven't gotten that your money plus the interest back, you would have uh, the option to come in and say, I want to I want to execute the, the sale of all this. The land is worth um, many more millions um, than uh, than the actual lending price. And I, I would like to do that because I would like to get my money back. So in case of bad days, that's always an option. That means that there's another one year wait, but you would also gain interest for that additional year. Um, and that's in, really things didn't uh, fall through. So one thing is if we haven't paid on time after two years. And the other thing is if the business really didn't succeed and you don't, because for us, uh, having more equity owners uh, that converted because we didn't pay is not a great thing because we're losing most of the portion of, of the actual company of, of our potential future uh, gains from this. And uh, Although gains and, and uh, future revenues haven't been in our mindset, we've always been just focusing on building. It is something that's that's important to any partnership and to to for the success of all this, for it to be a thriving place, it needs to be profitable. And and uh, and so there is that additional security in case things really, and like you say, shit hit the fan, uh, then you have a clause there that allows you to make sure you can auction this land for a lower price and you know get your investment back. I hope that answered your question, uh, Joe. Yep, it answers it. Thank you. Cheers. Um, happy to take more questions. We have 10 more minutes for this. Okay, Carla. Hi, nice to meet you. Thank you as well. Uh, so I, I know Yoko since the beginning, but I, I was moving to US, so I it was not that time, which I cannot say that I regret because everything has 
time in our lives. But anyways, I didn't invest at the time, but now I'm really, I'm considering to, to participate. But when we are talking about wellness and I've been following Costa Rica for a while, uh, I understand, and I'm not sure if it is what you're looking for, is to kind of also transform this wellness center like in a longevity center, because we know for a fact that Costa Rica has this blue zone, uh, like uh, mark in, in the world. And I, I'm feeling that more and more people are looking for those kind of, uh, not only retreats, but places to kind of escape at least part of the time of their year. And I was really uh, amazed at the last retreat that I made in Costa Rica last December. Half of the people are living already in Costa Rica and the other half part time. So I really, I really believe in this model. That's why, of course, I'm here. But this is the question. Do you think about this longevity? Because this is a kind of marketing at the same time, I think it is true if we start to think about health when we are younger, it's much better to achieve 100 years than only taking medicine. So uh, how do you think about this? How is this for you? I, I can take that question. Carla, thank you for bringing that to the forefront. And your point is well taken. For those who may not be aware or familiar, Costa Rica, Santa Teresa particularly, is located on the Nicoya Peninsula. And that is a position within one of five blue zones in the world. Uh, the other places are in Japan. There's a couple of places in Southern Italy, in France, et cetera. But they're the areas where there's documented uh, the longest living individuals in the world, uh, or the, the largest documentation of uh, centigenarians or people that live to be 100. And there's been a lot of research more recently from Peter Attila, uh, who talks about longevity. You can get his book and he also has podcasts, but there's also a Netflix uh, documentary that kind of summarizes the Blue Zone and its importance. And uh, part of the reason why longevity is a hot topic for that area is because of the natural characteristics of the region. Uh, you have, you know, moderate to temperate climate, there's access to natural foods, wellness, crime, and poverty are low. And these are all things that are attributed to extending longevity in life. When you read some of the most recent research, you think about the idea that, you know, you can exercise and eat well, and the only value you'll gain is to die healthy. But the idea here is that that health that you gain will contribute to long life. And so that was actually part of the ethos of establishing a health and wellness clinic in Santa Teresa, because again, to your point, Carla, that is a, a, an, an important and an interesting marketing play in the sense of um, it is an area that sustains longevity and being able to demonstrate it not only from prior experience, but to be able to show the research evidence uh, to support it uh, will only add to the attractiveness of individuals, not only investing, but also living and thriving in that area. Thank you, Jabars. My personal opinion would be kind uh, of the opinion I've acquired after watching Netflix a while ago. Um, that that uh, longevity uh, and blue zone is something that needs that need to be recreated because even here in this blue zone that where we're at, which in a way it is the blue zone, but in a way blue zone is your lifestyle, how you live, and maybe living here um, makes it a little bit easier to have that um, additional. Uh, you know, benefits of what you're eating, um, but also community, which is really important, uh, which is very big part of, of longevity is, is to just have good friends around you and people that you can relate. Uh, and that is maybe what's in the forefront of, uh, of Yoko is community. Thank you. Curious if uh, if anybody else 
would like to ask maybe one last final question for today before we adjourn. Um, I would say this, I'm, um, I'm very glad to see some of the familiar faces and also the um, what we're doing is is something that is has a lot of positive impact and we we want need you all to support and be part of for ourselves right now how things are thank, thank you everyone so nice to meet you all yeah.